uh, welcome back to the part two of the lab 10 video tutorial so so far we have created the hardware platform of our project and then we have written the application on it so uh, we have gone through the code how is it working so now it's time to run the code uh, on to the hardware so for that we will have to make some changes first we have to create a new hardware target connection say this is Zybo RS it is default target uh, right the IP on which you want to connect so right now I want to connect to 175 uh, okay. all right so it's it's showing me it's already so okay I have already made it so yeah if, you, if it is not there you can uh, make this let me test the connection if it is fine yeah so the connection is established Next, we need to do the changes in the board support packages. So I hope I have already done that. Let me see it again. Mm, yes. Yeah. So for the standard input and standard output, instead of UART, we have to select the core site and click on OK. Once you click on OK, your board support package will uh, be re your source for the board support package will be regenerated. So, so far, so good. We have created the hardware server. We have changed. Uh, made the changes in the both support packages right uh, so now let's uh, run the application on the debug perspective make sure that you are connected to the vpn before doing that okay so go to the debug configurations uh, so i have already created our debug configuration and click on debug and wait so far it gets connected okay so some operation is running Okay, so wait for a while till it gets connected to the remote server. Okay, so we are connected to the remote server and the program is stuck at breakpoint main. It's fine. So far there is no, uh, so if, if I look at the breakpoints, there are two breakpoints. One is at the exit and one is at the main. So currently we are at the main and the program is stuck here. So before proceeding, I need to open the JTAG terminal. Uh, okay, so I have the JTAG terminal with me. Now let's resume the program. All right. Okay, so now it is asking me to enter the elements of the matrix. So let me enter the element one, say one, this is two, this is two. So the matrix element one input uh, is taken care of. Uh, now let's take uh, the input on matrix 2 right so this is 1 1 2 2 so as you can see the entered matrix m1 is 1 1 2 2 the entered matrix m2 is 1 1 2 2 so the multiplication is coming out to be fine and the ps took 1.52 microsecond to calculate the product this is when we rein the code uh, under the default uh, optimization right so now let's change the optimization and see what is the effect of changing the optimization on the execution time, right? So for doing that, we have to make a few changes uh, in our code, not the code, but in the build settings. Uh, yeah. So let's see. A um, few changes that I need to do is, uh, yeah, so instead of M1, it should be M2. And uh, yeah rest of the things look good that's fine so now we are building with the own optimization so while building the code what do you when when you talk about building the code so building the code when when you when when this code gets uh, converted into the assembly language whatever the compiler do how the instructions are being put into and how so whatever the process is going on behind so there are different optimization levels on which you, you can apply apply while the compiler is building your code right so if i go to the cc plus plus build settings and into the optimization yeah so let's go to this optimization so there is none optimization for timing so uh, optimize is o1 optimize more is o2 and optimize o3 is the most right so what you need to do in this lab you need to run all the optimization one by one so currently I'm just showing you by running one of the optimization. 
So I'm running the optimize most. So this optimize most, uh, what it will do is it will put all the effort on the, uh, for optimizing the code. So the degree of effort it will put uh, on optimizing the code while building it uh, will be the highest. So let's see by uh, running this optimization. So let's click on OK. So once I have done this, so some changes will be there in building box space. That's why it ran again. Uh, now let's rerun the debug perspective and see uh, if there is some change. Uh, and so I should write here, this is an O3 optimization. So first save this code and let me run it again. So if you see, uh, I've ran the O3 optimization earlier, I was getting 1.37 microsecond. So now let's see what the optimization actually did to this thing. And is there any difference we are getting or not? So let, let's look into it. Okay. Uh, let's debug, click on debug. Okay. Yes, we want to relaunch it. And let's wait for a while till it gets connected. All right, so again, the breakpoint is at main and we need to run the JTAG terminal. All right, okay. So now let's run it. Let's, let's resume it if you, if you can see. Okay, so we will be doing the same thing, entering the element two, two. So for the matrix two, one, one, two, two. So now you can see there is a huge difference in the timings, right? So earlier it was taking 1.37 microseconds. Now it's taking only 34.34 microseconds. So that is the effect of optimization on the code. So now, now your task is to run one by one all the optimization O1, O2, O3 and OS and see what is the effect on the execution time of the code doing the same now now right now what we are doing is we were uh, looking at the two cross three matrix now next thing is let's change the size of the matrix and keep the optimization as it is and see uh, how is the time changes obviously like intuitively it is uh, intuitively we can argue that the time should increase and let's see if it is increasing or not so yeah for the two cross two matrix as well you have to run all the optimization in your lab and see what is the effect of time and if you want to know more about it, you can read on the compiler optimization. What are these, how the compiler does that, right? Now let's close it and change the order of the matrix and see under the same optimization, what is the effect on the time, right? Okay, so now I'm changing the order from two to three and I'm running onto the O3 optimization, right? Now let's see, debug as, debug configurations, all right. So yeah, we want to relaunch it and click on yes and wait for a while to get it connected to the server. Okay. Yeah. Now we are good to go. Let's open the JTAG terminal. All right. So it's a three cross three matrix now. Let's run it. Perfect. Okay. So let's say one, one, one. Two, 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 three, three, three. Similarly, I'm entering the same element for the matrix two. One, 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 two, 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 three, three, three. Yeah, so I have entered this element. So if I look into it, I think I'm getting the correct answer. Yeah, three, three plus six plus, oh, this is 18, that's, <coughs> <laughs> Fine. If I look at the last uh, for the let, let let me let me see if the answer is coming. Fine. Let's pick any random value. So I'm picking the uh, row row two column one. So the answer is coming out to be eighteen. So if I so the element are three 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 in the row two and for in the corresponding column the elements are one two three. So if I do this, this should be three plus six plus nine so 12 plus 6 18 so that's fine so the answer is coming out to be fine so now if you see 
and intuitively we also argued that it should increase so as you can see it is increasing like in the, in the o3 optimization earlier we were getting about 32 microsecond 0.32 microseconds and now we are getting 0.94 microseconds so yeah that was intuitive as well as you increase the size of the matrix the execution time increases because the number of uh, multiplication accumulation operation are increasing right so that was about the part 2 you have to perform all the optimization on different kind of matrices and observe the effect of it right now uh, let's come on to the part 3 of it so in so far we have used the debug debug perspective but we have not explored different functionalities of the debug perspective right so we will look into the functionalities different uh, functionalities of the debug perspective uh, let's see okay so i have to open this in the debug perspective again let's run it through debug configuration and go into the debug right okay so if you yeah let's wait for it to it open perfect completely okay so it's getting launched that's fine okay so as i can see so this is my complete debug window the code is here and you can see multiple windows here so there are variables so in the variables so m1 is a two dimensional array and it is a three cross three array as i can see right away and in the values if i look at the values so the values are the default values as you can see uh, for the 0 0 value 0 0 1 is this minus uh, whatever it is and so on similarly for the m2 we have some default values similarly for result we have some default values because right now we are stuck at the mean right at the mean function we are stuck at this code has not trained and all this value whatever we define in the code whatever integer or float the by default storage class is the auto class so in the auto whenever you define a variable it will take a default value it can take any default value it's not uh, necessary that it will take is only zero so as you can see right the second window is the breakpoint so by, uh, as i told you earlier as well the default breakpoints are at the function mean at the fun at the end the exit So these are the default breakpoints. So what are the breakpoints? So in the in the in the different languages also we like in you must have read about how while debugging we have to set some breakpoints in the code through which we can like monitor the values of uh, where so far so uh, you have monitored the values of variables and see uh, you must have see that whether your code is coming to this particular uh, uh, line at the execution or not. Right. Similarly, the similar function is served by these breakpoints as well. and the registers right so ultimately the on the ps part there are two arm cores which are running so in the processor there are some registers which will be ultimately used for your computation uh, the alu operations and other operations as well so you can see the values of these registers as well here right now one more thing is uh, if you want to add some more views to your debug windows you can go to window show view and let's say i want to see this disassembly so whatever the c code we have written it will be uh, definitely converted to the corresponding assembly language code whatever is the instruction set of processor given so as you can see here though all the c code is converted here to the corresponding assembly language code right so as you can see the print of a statement all those things right so you can relate with these things if you if you look at here so the for loop is there or everything is uh, right so that's how it's working okay so now we have added the disassembly view as well this is our main code it's stuck at the main breakpoint so what i will do is i will set two other breakpoints and i will see uh what will happen right so let's see so one breakpoint i'm setting after uh, your matrix one input has been done so intuitively i should say that after the matrix one input has been done so the, there should be these the all these things should be reflected in the m1 value because currently these are uh, these are some default values so i should get the values i required and the second breakpoint i am entering is here right this uh, here so whenever i get the input for the m2 i should see here what is happening right uh, these should get updated and finally i am getting here so the last breakpoint i am adding here that means whatever the result is calculated i should get the result value right that's fine in fact uh instead of adding it here i am adding it here 
So in order to add the breakpoint, just double click on the line on this blue bar you can see here, right? And if you want to remove the breakpoint, you can again double click on it. So now if I look into the breakpoints window, I have multiple breakpoints. So if one is at line 89, one is at line 98 and one is at 116. So I have added three uh, more breakpoints, right? So uh, till now I have uh, my code stuck that mean. So once I get the input for the matrix one, my code should uh, get stuck at here. So now once it gets stuck, so there are multiple options you can see. You can, uh, if you, if you uh, use this step into, so step into what it will do, it will get into this particular function, right? This will get into this particular function. So let, uh, if you get into step over, this will go to the next line and you can directly resume here. So you can see, you can explore this thing. Tag terminal, right? All right. So now let me resume it, resume the code. So once I resume the code, it is asking me for the matrix one elements. So let me write one, 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 two, 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 three, three, three. So once I entered these things, so as you can see, the code got stuck here and in the variables, I can see the values got updated, right? So because I have uh, put this breakpoint after the input process has been done for matrix one. So as you can now you can see in the M1, I'm getting one, 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 two, 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 and three, three, three. That means the variables have changed. So this is the uh, 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 purpose uh, of debugging. I can monitor the value of variables. Correspondingly, I can manage, uh, see that these registers are also changing. Whenever you see the yellow color, that means these have also changed. Once you are, you have done this, these have also changed, right? Now let's move on to the now resume it. If I resume it again, so it will ask me for the matrix two input. One, 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 two, 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 three, three, three. And again, it will stuck on the breakpoint. As I can see, M2 values have been updated. Corresponding register, some registers have been updated. And I still don't have the uh, result, right? Because the result has not been calculated yet. So M1 and M2 are fine. It is working according to me. Whatever I uh, assume, this is how it is working. The code is working fine so far, so good, right? Uh, so now let's see, uh, let's resume it and see uh, whether the results get updated or not, right? Uh, so I will resume it again. So now this uh, got stuck again because it's a third breakpoint and the result got updated as you can see. The result is 666, 12, 12, 12, and 18, 18, 18. That was we expected, right? And now if I once again resume it, so it should stop at the exit breakpoint, right? Exactly. So I got my result. I got my cal uh, time. And uh, as expected, the program got stuck at the last breakpoint, that is exit, right? So that's how you can use this debug perspective for your application, because in most cases, you will be uh, the breakpoints are very useful because in most cases we'll be looking at whether this particular statement has been written or not, or whether the variable values is changing or not. So these are some essential part which you will face uh, very, very, uh, very frequently. And that's why you, you need to know about the debugger thing, right? So yeah, uh, that's fine. Uh, so yeah, one more thing that which I also wanted to highlight. So, so we were facing some issue during uh, in the last lab. So I will recommend it whenever uh, you use the JTAG terminal after that, just disconnect from the server. So once you disconnect from the server, this channel gets closed. So this is recommended because uh, so far we are able to get multiple X's working as it was not working in the last lab, but yeah. So it is it is uh, advisable that you disconnect once you, are, once you are done with this JTAG terminal. So yeah, that's it for lab 10. I hope you are able to understand. Uh, I'm, I made my complete effort to make you understand. Uh, yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you for joining me.